go. Hey guys, Josh here for Ziggy Sanchez. I hope you're well. And today you are joining me. I'm catching up with a very special friend of mine, Brendan. Mate, how are you? Oh, I'm fantastic, man. Yourself? Mate, I am good, good, very good. And I'm even better now getting to talk to you. So, mate, um, I just wanted to jump on and uh, have a yarn, have a chat, and more so to be able to celebrate your recent success. So, uh, we've been doing some stuff, uh, but before we get into all the details, uh, mate, can you just kind of give yourself a bit of an intro and share a little bit of your background? Um, yeah. uh, my name is Brendan. I'm a father of two. I'm 47. Three years off, turning 50. Um, I was extremely overweight. Now I'm not, thanks to Josh. Uh, I do fly in, fly out. I've been doing it the last 12 years. I work five weeks away on a boat. Then I spend five weeks at home. So it's a real mix mash of lifestyles. I've, I've got the stress of work and I come home and then I've got to, the chaos of life, throwing it span and I go back out to work. And it's like having only really a half a life at home with my home and my family. So yeah, there's a little bit of pressure of that built up. But yeah, it's, um, things are pretty good. I mean, that's awesome. I, I talk to a lot of guys who are in a very similar situation, you know, like they fly in, fly out, um, and they struggle, like, and, and they're not sure on how to uh, get a handle on things. And then more so, they're not even sure that they're able to achieve results. You know what I mean? Like they've got goals, uh, but they're not sure it's possible. Like, so what have you done? Like, talk to us about your recent goals, and your achievements. Um, well, of the, um, do you want the actual the weight I've lost or the numbers? So I've been working with Josh for the last 12 weeks. Today is the actual 12, the last day of the 12 weeks intensive. If I've dropped 12.2 kilos. Down That's incredible. The 98.8 kilos. Yep. Um, I never thought I'd see sub, sorry, 88.8 kilos. I'd yep. see sub 90. I've lost 16 centimeters off my stomach, which um, yes. is crazy. Like, That's incredible. I actually, um, my chest sticks out further than my guts now, which is like, <laughs> it's cool. <Yeah. laughs> Um, so like some of the challenges I face working away, I work on a rig tender, so we move rigs like that's a professional rig shifter. And out and on the job, I do six hours on, six hours off. So that's you work six hours, and then on your six hours off, you got to get in and eat, clean, sleep, yep. get up, eat, get out on work for six hours. And um, so I thought that was going to be a real obstacle in me achieving my goals, but um, with a discussion with Josh, he's just you said to me it was like this is a, a chance to learn to overcome obstacles to, to you know they're not a not an issue and i when i actually told josh he was like what 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 problems and i thought he was being quite rude and <laughs> he messed that up. i can be a bit short sometimes but um <laughs> but in in the long run it was really good because it just made me realize that it was all in my head i was, I was making it an issue it wasn't an issue i devoted myself to eating healthy doing the exercise, Josh said, this is what you need to do to get your goal. Do you want your goal? Like, um, I got accountable to myself. I have to motivate myself. Josh told me what to do, but he couldn't make me do it. And, but with a bit of guidance, I managed to do my workout. I did my eating. Um, and I, I couldn't weigh myself on the boat because the boat moves up and down, being on a, an unstable surface. I only had a few ways of tracking data. And one of them was measuring my stomach. So every day I measured my stomach every day. And at the end of the week, it was getting smaller. And I knew I was on track. And then when I got home, I dropped like four and a half kilos in five weeks. And I was like, mm. just, it was amazing. So even in, you think you're really poor time and the circumstances are, are against you and you think you're going to be tired, you know, um, they were all excuses that I was making mm. to not do the work. So yep. instead of listening to the excuses, I went like, that's it. I was just going to do it. Mm. So we modified the workout down to being a half hour split body routine. So I could get it done, get in there, get out. And um, yeah, it was, I, I really learned an internal power of, I can do that in a mm. rig shift, six hours, six hours off. I can do it anywhere. Yep. That so was really empowering. Yeah. And I suppose that's a really important part to just bring up there, like, because when you were explaining the hours to me and stuff and how you had to work. So I kind of, we kind of went back and forth a little bit for me to get a, a good, clear understanding on what you were facing. And I did, I turned around and said, like, and like, what's, what's the drama? Now, now, now that we know what we're dealing with and we made everything suit you and the lifestyle. You know, I could have quite easily have said, no, you need to do this regardless. But first and foremost, like you needed to be able to perform at work. 
like, you know, there's there's guys and there's teams relying on you to be able to perform and, and, and do your job. Like, it's not just about, cool, I'm just going to go smash it out of the gym for three hours every day. Like, that would have been, you know, completely incomprehensible. You know, so we're able to make it work. Yeah, no, it was good. Um, and by just adjusting um, and what you were telling me was, if I can't exercise more, what can I focus on? What can I work mm. with in my time structure? And the yeah. time structure was my eating. So um, because the meals weren't cooked for me, like I had no control over what was being cooked. I had to really then start looking at um, weighing the food so I could actually understand mm. what a serve the food size was, picking healthy veggie options, staying away from sauces. Um, but to be honest, I've ate more while I was away than I have ever eaten my entire life. And it's crazy. And I've lost weight. Like it's, you lost four and a half kilos. Yeah. And I ate more. Like I was eating four times a day. Mm. If actually on workout days, it was six because I had the, the um, pre-workout and the post-workout shake plus yep. like, four meals. Like it's crazy. Like I, I, when I first started doing this, I was like, I'm not going to lose weight. I'm eating too much food. There's just mm. it's not going to work. But it was really cool. Well, I suppose from that too, and, and, and then when you came back and you you were able to achieve that goal, you know, the, the goal was when you're at CSI, like, let's just come back and hit that first goal that we set in terms of weight. Um, and then you hit that, actually, you kind of blew it out of the park. And then we set a new goal and, and to push further than you ever even dream capable of achieving. I think a big part of that comes back from just the success you were able to achieve you know, when you're at sea, like it's it's too easy to, and again, like it doesn't necessarily need to be like if you fly or fly out, like we create um, all, this, all these excuses on why we can't. And then when we do achieve, it, it grants us the opportunity then to, you know, how, how far could I take this? Like how, how could I then take what I'm learning about myself and put it into other areas of my life and like really push beyond? Yeah, well, the next goal we set was 90 and I went, no, I want 89. I wanted to see 89. And I've actually seen under that, like today was 88.8 kilos, but I actually have seen an 88.4 on the scales the other day. But as, as we are aware, like weight fluctuates. And um, one thing that I had a really big issue was, was weighing myself every day. I was like, mm. I was, you know, I said to Josh, I, I can't do that. It screws my head. And then you were saying, well, that's because it's an emotional reaction to the scale. Mm. And then you explain the scientific and the logical point of view of it. It's like you need to eat so many calories per day to go up a kilo. Mm. And, you know, and then once you said that, I was like, well, what am I doing? Like, yeah. like I started tracking, started doing as for the thing. And again, it's like um, it just taught me the power of actual logic versus emotional. Like stop, mm. stop, stop being emotional. Yep. Look, our emotional decisions can be very, very powerful. Like they can help us move forward. But we've got to be able to sit back and, and look at things analytically. From time to time, it's like, yeah, what is happening? What is my progress? What's actually holding me back? And how, how else am I achieving? And now something that we said off camera just before I flicked the record on, that you said like how many other things or how many other areas you've been benefiting in life. It hasn't just been about the training because I know sometimes it's easy to get fixated in terms of, look, just give me a training program. Just give me the diet. And the truth is if it simply just came down to a training program and a diet, people could find that on Google and no one would be stuck. You know what I mean? Like no one would be frustrated. No one would be having challenges with their weight. So what else have you learned through this experience? Um, I've learned accountability coupled with consistency. Mm -hmm. um, the accountability is like set myself the goal. I'm in charge of myself. And, and the, the reason I did all this was for myself. Um, I didn't do it for my children. I didn't do it for my wife. Um, I've, myself and my wife give each other $50 a fortnight to as a slush fund. Instead of you putting that on alcohol or, or weird crap, I've sucked it into paying for this program. And it's like, it was empowering that I did it for myself, for cool. me, for myself. And the accountability is starting to really focus into more areas of my life. It's like um, the, the, the power of knowing why I'm doing what I'm doing. It, it's, I did not expect to get such a life boosting and life affirming education and learning how to get fit and healthy. It's like, even with dealing with my children, I'm, I'm more, when I deal with them, I don't just react in the mobile, I stop and think, how am I interacting, interacting? What can I do to help them get better? How can I educate them better? So that they can become a better person. Like it's, 
yeah, it's um, I've improved myself personally. It's actually even pushed me to do more personal development that I, I realized that I wasn't stuck physically. I was stuck personally. I, I was in a rut. No, I didn't want to grow. I didn't want to move forward. It's like, yeah, it's it's amazing. I'm actually quite out of words of how to describe what oh, I'm that's, really found. That's cool. That's cool. It really opens up the door. But let's, let's just kind of retract just a little bit and, and to touch on a subject which can be quite touchy um, because you said that you didn't do it for your kids, didn't do it for your wife, didn't do it for anyone else. You did it for yourself. And it's quite easy to get, you know, we get caught in that position where as men, you know, we're there, we're providers, we look after our family, look after our kids, and, and we'll tell ourselves, look, I need to put the children first. I need to put out, you know, my wife first. I need to put everything else first. But you've done exactly what you needed to do and you've looked after you because the reality is that if you aren't the best that you can be, how can you be the best dad? How can you be the best husband? How can you be the best anything if you're simply running on fumes and, and you know, feeling less than what you're capable of? Yeah, that's it. Like, I mean, I'm more healthier now and, like, I've actually understand time management. Mm. I devote my time. I, I get up now at, like, half past four. I'm at the gym by five. That's yep. my time. Yeah. And I, I train every second day when we're away at work every second day, and I found that training at home – I train three days. I get Saturday, Sunday off, but yep. I'm still up at 4.35 o'clock every morning and I go rollerblading or awesome. I'm out doing stuff with the, with my dog or, you know, that's mm. my time. And I've actually found that I need to give myself that time so that I'm, 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 my cup's full. But then by the time I get to the kids, which is like quarter seven, go get them out of bed, I'm already alive. I'm awake. I'm in a good mood. Anything they come at me with, it's like, yeah, I can deal with because mm. I'm already devoted to myself and it's like yeah, I didn't realize how much I, I needed my own for me yeah 100 percent. and so often we use the excuse of time and it's like you know I don't have time to look after myself but the reality is where well we are allowing a lot of opportunities like to, to slide past like in that situation if you're training early in the morning because you've identified that works best for you you can quite easily sleep in you can sleep until 7 30 and be chasing the rest of the day and be frustrated that you're not looking after you but you've found something that works but the truth is by looking after you number one you can then better serve those who need you to be on top of your game this is that's it yep oh, I, I was explaining to my father-in-law about the reason why i did it and he says to me, oh, you did it for your kids? I went, no, mm. I did it for me. Like, as a secondary circle of influence, yeah, the kids do get the benefit of a mm. fit, healthy dad. They can go to the roller skate park with my son on his scooter and I can roll a blade or go roller skating with my other son or walk the dog or take my wife. But it's like by choosing to do it for myself, I'm the one who's that blame if I succeed and I'm at the blame if I fail and I, and I blame myself for success. I know it sounds weird, but no, I, 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 I succeeded and it's my fault I, I succeeded. I did you know, it. That, that's hundred percent. And again, like what you've just done and the way, you, the way you've said that is we often talk about, yeah. So when you first started, you say you're 101 kilos, like that's not you. That's just a symptom. That's a symptom of the environment that you're living in. And right now at 88 kilos, so you're 12 and a half kilos lighter, this is a new symptom. This is this is the new outcome. And in this situation like this, like when, when you sit back and it's like, well, you know, these, your, your kids now, they're experiencing that symptom of having a fit, healthy dad who's able to make decisions and take charge. And that's it. Like it, it, it's when we start to see things in, in that nature, um, it's very empowering. And again, now I'll be able to look at you as a source of inspiration. It's like, you know, my dad's out there doing this. There's no reason I can't as well. So that is very, very cool. Now, one of the other things I know we've kind of chatted back on, on a back and forth, um, I wasn't your first pick. So no. you, you've, you've tried to lose lose weight before. Like how many times have you tried in the past? <laughs> well, I've tried every time I went out to sea. <laughs> and I go out to sea five times a year. So yeah. I know. Go back. Say five years, <laughs> we'll give it five. Like 25 times in five years, I've tried to lose money. Wow. And, and I like Josh's response, mate, you failed. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but that's really cool because it's the truth. I did fail. But well, yeah, the quanti- the quanti- the, to, to quantify and to play devil's advocate, like every time people go on a diet, like they lose weight. So they succeed in losing weight. 
But the truth is in reality is you'll get to a point where whatever path is, if you've gone down is unsustainable. You can't maintain it. It's miserable. Um, it's boring. It takes up too much of your time. And it's only going to come to a time when you just back. It's like, you know what, this isn't worth it. I'm, I'm doing me. Yeah, I'm going back to the way I was. And, and if we focus on the symptoms, so i.e. you start going on a weight loss diet or whatever it is, um, you will regain that weight. So that's what I mean. So the reality is you lost, you lost weight 25 times, but you regained it 25 times. And if not more. Yeah. Because you never, regain, you, never, you never stop at the same amount. Like if you lose five kilos, it's going to take you regaining six until you take action again. And the net result is not only in that five years that you try 25 times, you probably put on an additional five kilos in that period. And the thing that... I know, I know recently when, because you, you made the commitment, like this is going to be the last time you got back into shape and you're done with it. But even then, I still wasn't your first choice. No, no, I've spoke to three other coaches. Yep. And the, um, the biggest reason I chose you, Josh, was you talked about the psychology of mm. losing weight. It just wasn't follow this program, do this, and like, check in and you know but because like i've done that i know how to well i know how to train i, I well i thought i did anyway yep. I, I know i know exercising i thought i knew how to eat you know but there was the, the actual psychology behind it like the, the accountability and then you cover that with the consistency and like just yeah the the and all the little videos and the trainings and the, the mental stuff changing and like you say being overweight is a symptom of my environment and the environment that I was in was I was is in a rut. I was stuck, and it's that personal growth that's actually helped shift me to a new me. And it's like mm. I'm more than just 88 kilos. I'm a whole new person. Like people are actually asking me for advice, and not just on health, but on other aspects of their life because they can see mm. how healthy I look, how positive, how much glow, how much vivacity I've got. It, it's it's really quite um off-putting to be asked questions about other people's like, and they're going, oh, you've been doing life coach stuff. Well, I want to do this and that. How do you mm. find that? So, well, and then I say to people, it comes back to being accountable. And accountable yeah. to yourself, not, not to anyone. Because if, if I, you know, I can lie to anybody, but I know I've lied. So that's where it comes into. Like if I stop lying to myself, it's going to be right. And, and again, the more, the more times that you, you do lie to yourself over the reasons why you have the symptoms and everything that you've gone through, the harder it's going to come to fix it. And at the end of the day, like you've got to, you've got to get to a point where you're just drawing the line in the sand. It's like, you know what? I'm no longer my symptom. I don't want to be this person. I've got to take ownership. And everything that I've been up until this point, every time I've tried, every time I've failed, it's all on me. Like I've got to own absolutely everything. But what that does, then it grants you the opportunity to be able to find a lasting solution. That's it. Like I'm not my symptom. I'm, I'm not overweight because, yeah, people will follow me. And I go, like, I honestly don't believe people have weight problems. I don't believe they exist. And I know sometimes that can be, you know, quite sensitive for some people. It's like, how can you say there's no weight problems? I've been struggling for years. It's the symptom. It's just, yeah. kind of just simply doing the wrong thing. And once you, you do, you draw that line in the sand, it's like, you know what, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to take ownership of this and I'm going to fix it once and for all. I'm going to look past the fact I want to lose weight. I'm going to look past a diet and I'm going to create a new environment where this version of myself is unsustainable. How can I sustain this, this version I don't want to be if I'm living a completely different lifestyle and then make things work for me you know, I don't have to be a slave to the gym seven days a week, twice a day if I don't want to. No one can do that. I'm busy. I've got work and all that sort of stuff. And plus there's things that you want to do. You know, you start to realize that time really isn't the issue. It's lack of prioritization because you believe the symptoms, you believed all the other crap. And once you start looking at things analytically, then you become confident. It's like, you know what? I am certain this is going to work because I'm doing the right work for me. And as I said, like it will then compound into every aspect of your life. Yeah, not only does it improve, you know, your health and the weight will naturally start to come down, but it does, it improves your relationships, it improves your performance at work, it improves, you know, your, your, your kids, but most importantly, it improves your relationship with yourself. And this is what I find, like a lot of guys won't talk about it, you know, the, the, the internal demons that they have that eat away at them every single day, you know, am I enough? Am I doing a good job? Am I a good parent, good provider, good, all this sort of stuff? You know, and this isn't where I wanted my life to end up. You know, I'm sick of struggling. I'm sick of frustrated. Or on the flip side, everything can be absolutely fantastic. You've got you know, the, 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 the cars and the picket fences and all that sort of stuff, but you just simply are not happy within the body that you're in because it's like, shit, everything else is awesome, but I'm stuck. Yeah. 
So, man, it's, it's, it's awesome what you've done. Absolutely awesome. And I know most importantly, though, I noticed it's just a stepping stone. I noticed so much more. Yeah, I'm looking forward to seeing my abs. That was the, the goal for me doing this was to see my abs by the time I'm 50. Like, yeah. um, I've seen guys where I work and they're all overweight. They're all old. And we do a very physical job. And by the time they're 55, 60, they're all broken ass, you know. And then yeah. like, you got to retire. And like, I've got a good retirement plan coming up. I don't want to be broken ass and fat and, you know, like, you know, stuff that, man. I would enjoy my retirement. Yeah. And, um, so, like, and now, you know, I'm, I'm just smashing it. And, like, all my friends are just absolutely, like, they're gobsmacked. And they're like, how the what? And they're like. So yeah, it's cool. Oh man, that's cool. And and, and, it, and it's something I've always I've always believed in. It's a it's a phrase I coined, yeah, creating physique freedom. Yeah, or having complete and utter exploitation of your body, you know, to do what you want, wear what you want, be the person that you want, you're an opportunity coming up, let's go for it. You know, instead of feeling, you know, old, broken, getting ready to uh, you know, spend your retirement at the RSL because that's basically all you're able to do. Not that, you know. But no, it's that's man, that is awesome. That is awesome. I'll right, we'll wrap this up. Look. Do you have like any recommendations or anything? Are you like, are you glad that you went down this process with me? Oh, most definitely. I'd highly recommend anyone who's ever tried to change their physique to work with you. I really would like, um, and like I've, I've told a few guys to, to talk to you. I know one has, um, but yeah, it's like, it was the best decision that I've ever made. And like I said, I've, I looked at other coaches. It took me about six months to work out who I wanted to work with. It wasn't a decision I made lightly, um, but it's like, it's priceless. Like the, the cost of it is nothing. It's, it is insurmountable. I know we discussed prices when we first talked about it, but like the cost is like, you know what? I would have paid double to what I've got. I really would have. Give you an idea. <laughs> didn't, didn't say that at the start, <laughs> right? <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, it's good. But I think the, the, one of the biggest issues I got now is um, I need to go and get a new wardrobe. And yeah, I'm, so I'm sorry. Yeah, sorry about that. Yeah, it sucks. Eh? Really? Enjoy, you know what? Enjoy the process. Enjoy being able to then you know go in and and, and buying the things that you want and and feel a million bucks. It's great. I brought myself a, a, a large t-shirt for the first time, and I'm like, oh, I don't feel fit. I put it on my wife goes. Wow, look at that. You know, your chest sticking out, your arms are sticking yeah. out, your belly's not showing. She's going like, that's it, you know, get it. And then she's like, and actually a really funny thing is I brought two pairs of jeans just before I started the program. And now they are so loose. Like I've got to go and get new jeans. It's like, yeah. it's crazy. Sorry, man. Ah, that's what it was a job. <laughs> no, man, that, that's good. That's good. And look, the most, the most exciting part in all of this will be when we actually catch up again. Because again, as I've always said, look, success isn't just about achieving the result. Success is about sustaining. It is about you know, maintenance. It is about continued growth and all that sort of stuff. It is all about getting back into shape for the last time. So, that is, so it's been an absolute pleasure. Thank you for uh, for talking. And um, you. anyone else, if you're watching this, please, uh, please take Brendan's lead. Everything just simply starts with a conversation. That is before before we go. I just want to say yeah. last thing. This was the most easiest way I've ever lost weight. I've ate more food, trained less. I've had more time for me and my family. Mm. Um, like it, it did not even seem like I was even trying at some stages. It was just the most easiest. I, I can't recommend Josh enough. It's like, yeah, if, if you struggled, don't struggle anymore. Yeah. See this guy. How cool is that? Yeah, eat more, train less, and have more free time and confidence to do the other shit in life that you want to do with the people. That's it. So, that's it. so again, like if you want to take Brendan's lead, everything starts off a conversation. Um, so just simply scroll down, click the link. I would be happy to, to chat and see if we can help. And um, we'll go from there. Thank you, legend. Uh, mate, we'll catch up again soon. Hello, man. All righty.